Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on disaster recovery concepts. Today I'm going to be talking about disaster recovery sites, and then I'm going to conclude with a brief discussion on data backups. With that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing disaster recovery sites. In the business world, a disaster is any event that involves more than the day-to-day -day emergency response resources. It is a fact of life that disasters will and do happen. Any event that can prevent an organization from functioning normally, or at least somewhat normally, will have a major impact on the continued existence of that business. The more time that is spent non-operational, the harder it becomes to recover from a disaster. An organization should create a disaster response plan, also known as a DRP, in order to address these situations. The DRP needs to be a comprehensive plan that covers everything from the unfortunate loss of key personnel to the loss of a critical business site. There are several strategies that can be covered in the DRP that involve the loss of a critical business site. The first one is, is the cold site. A cold site is when a company creates a prearranged location that the organization can utilize in the case of a disaster. It is a backup space only. There is no IT infrastructure that is put in place or maintained at the cold site. In the case of a disaster, the business moves all personnel, systems, and equipment that's required to the site. It is the least expensive backup site to maintain, but it's also the hardest type of backup site to bring up to speed. Then there is the warm site. It is a prearranged location that an organization can utilize in the case of a disaster. It usually contains a pre-set up office space and some critical IT infrastructure components, as in copies of key servers and networking equipment. In the case of a disaster, the business moves all personnel, systems, and other necessary equipment to the site, and usually only requires the addition of the latest backups to get the system back up and running but it is more expensive than a cold site and takes more time to bring up to speed than a hot site. So let's talk about the hot site. It's a prearranged location that an organization can utilize in the event of a disaster. It contains a duplicate of all equipment and systems necessary to perform all critical operations. In the case of a disaster, only personnel need to be moved to the site before operations can proceed. It allows for the quickest recovery of operations, but it's the most expensive of the backup sites to create and maintain. Backup sites can be further categorized. They could be a shared site or a time-shared site. It's an alternative disaster recovery site where the cost of maintaining the facility is split with another organization. In this situation, if, if the disaster is widespread, the organizations may be required to share the use of the facility. Then there are the exclusive sites. It's an alternative disaster recovery site where the cost of maintaining the facility is borne by a single organization. In the case of a disaster, that organization will not be required to share the facility, but it is more expensive than a shared site. Now let's conclude with a discussion on data backups. Data plays an extremely important role in the life of organizations. They may live or die based on the data that they need to utilize. This importance on data requires that data be kept and maintained safely. Without it, most organizations will not be able to operate until it can be recreated. This means that data backup plans and procedures are a vital part of any DRP. Backups should be stored off-site in order to safeguard against a disaster. Backups also play a key role in recovering from unexpected consequences or from the failure of a component. Backup schedules must be implemented and periodic tests should be conducted to ensure that the backup process is working. 
There's nothing worse than trying to install a backup and then finding out that it's not a good backup. There are different types of backup. There is the full backup. All data on the targeted system is backed up. It is the slowest backup method with the highest storage requirements, but it also leads to the fastest recovery period. When using a full backup for recovery, it only requires the last full backup file. Then there are incremental backups. Only new or modified files are backed up. This is the fastest backup method with the lowest storage requirements, but it leads to the slowest recovery period. When using incremental backups, the recovery process requires that the last full backup file is used and all of the incremental backups since that last full backup. And finally, there's the middle ground, which is a differential backup. Only data that has changed since the last full backup is saved. The time to backup is moderate, and it requires a moderate amount of storage, but it's also the middle ground on the length of time for recovery. With the differential type backup process, the recovery requires that the last full backup file be used and the last differential backup file. That's why it's the middle ground between the other two. The configuration files of network devices should also be backed up. Once a network device has been configured and is operating as expected, a backup of the configuration files and operating system should be created. This helps to speed up the recovery time in the cases of equipment failure or when a change in the configuration has an unexpected consequence. Now that concludes this discussion on disaster recovery concepts. I began by talking about disaster recovery sites and then I concluded with a brief discussion on data backups. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.